But the actual America we now live in has things like, like the fear of numbers. This one freaks me out every time I walk into an elevator and it's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14. <laughs> I did the experiment. 80% of all buildings along Broadway in New York City do not have a 13th floor. This is the United States of America. And we have people afraid of the number 13. <laughs> in those buildings, what I want to do is carry a Sharpie, cross off the 14th. Yeah. <laughs> that's the 13th floor, you're not fooling anybody. <laughs> you know what else we're afraid of? We're afraid of like negative numbers. What happens when you get to the lobby and the floor below that, there's like B for like basement. Yeah. And then what's below that? SB for like sub-basement. <laughs> Now, now we need some more consonants. We need to go below that. SSB. <laughs> now, there's a perfectly good arithmetic way to accomplish this. The whole negative numbers. Yes. But that scares Americans. You know who it does not scare? Germans. Okay? <laughs> this is a museum in Germany. It's not even a science museum. It's a history museum. And you're looking at floor negative one. You can't notice it? There it is. A little bigger for you. What country do we still associate with having some of the finest engineers in the world? Germany, Germany of course. Then there's like, there's a math problem going on, okay? Congressman, uttering the following sentence. I've changed my views since the <laughs> made a math error, or maybe the congressman knew what he was saying. <laughs> and was secretly not changing his views at all. I don't know what's scary. And this one, the newspaper headline, in New York City, half the schools in the district are below <laughs> if this were true. We'd have to rethink the foundations of mathematics if this were false. This one's a little more subtle. I'm sorry if you can't read these in the back row. I'll read them out. Here's one. Another newspaper had like 80% of airplane crash survivors had studied the locations of the exit doors on paper. This sounds pretty good. I want to be a survivor if something bad happens. So I'm going to read where the exit doors are on paper. Because I just read this headline. Here's the problem with that headline. Here's the problem. Suppose 100% of the dead people had studied the locations of the exit doors on paper. Without the other half of the information that died with the dead people. <laughs> it continues. Okay? Here's a book that I bought How to Defend Yourself Against Alien Abduction. I read that book before I came here because I wanted to make sure I arrived. I did everything it said. So somebody wrote this book. A publisher bought this book from the author. They distribute the book. It's for sale in bookstores. It is 21st century America. Next year, what do we call next year? 2012. 2012. I can't see, you don't have this problem, because like, I don't know how many of you are the astrophysicist at the cocktail party, but I'm the, ast the astrophysicist at the cocktail party. They all come up to me and say, is the world going to end next year? So I get that question. So I could, and I, I said, why do you think so? Oh, why the Earth and the, the Sun and the black hole in the center of the galaxy, they're going to align on December 21st, and the Mayan calendar, and, that, and it's all going to end. So I can say, well, you can calculate that extra gravity. 
We have laws of physics that enable this. And you can show that it's insignificant. I could give that answer, but that answer never works. <laughs> because they can't do the calculation, number one. Number two, they can always say, maybe that little extra bit is a tipping point for whatever catastrophe would happen on Earth. So I need a more powerful way to respond. So I say, you know this alignment of the Earth's sun in the center of the galaxy on December 21st, 2012? The scientifically literate response to that is not wrong. No, it's how often does that happen? It happens every year, December 21st. We're still here. You don't need to calculate that one. How to Survive 2012, a book. People writing books, selling books on it. How about bad physics? The Holiday Inn of the United Kingdom, six months ago, had an advertising campaign. Because we've all come back from a long, hard day. You get into the hotel bed that's tightly tucked, and the sheets are cold. So they had this great idea that you could hire human bed warmers <laughs> that pre-warmed your bed for you before you got in. In fact, you can leave them there while you're in the bed. <laughs> this is their ad photo. <laughs> now, here's the problem. First of all, I know that he's looking at her and not him. That's uh, just... <laughs> That's interesting. Another interesting point, I think, is that the only way they can actually warm the bed is if the heat from their skin could reach the sheets. <laughs> but they're completely insulated, right on down to the mittens. When you insulate somebody, there is no heat transfer. That's basic physics 101. The only way they could have warmed his bed is if, is if both of them were butt naked. <laughs> that would have changed their... That. that would have boosted, yeah, the reservation. 